In this video, I'll be talking about Amazon's secret evil plan to rule the world and become one of the most valuable companies on the planet and why I own the stock. So let's find out more. I think that Amazon is one of the most misunderstood companies or stocks in the stock market. Like a lot of people, if you ask them, you know, what's Amazon? What do they do? They say, well, it's an e-commerce company. Not really. It started as an e-commerce company, but in the last few years, they've transformed into a totally different animal. In fact, the e-commerce business is not how they make their money. It's not really profitable. They use their e-commerce business as a way to get people into their ecosystem and that's where they make their money from a lot of other stuff. It's kind of like the man offering free candy for the kid to get into the van. That's what Amazon does with their e-commerce business. Um, they don't make it profitable, but they make money in a lot of other ways. Now, second thing is if you ask people, is Amazon an expensive stock? They say, of course, the PE ratio is like over 100, it's really expensive. They want you to think that way. but. If you dig deeper, you find that Amazon is actually really, really undervalued. And I'm gonna explain why in this video. So let's first understand what are all the different businesses that Amazon is in. They've got over 43 different subsidiary businesses in the gaming field, payments, advertising, media, logistics, fulfillment, retail, entertainment, music, cloud computing, private label, digital. Now, in a lot of businesses, but I can group them into five main businesses, in fact, What's interesting about Amazon is when you buy Amazon, you're not buying one business. You're buying five leading businesses at once. So what are the five businesses? The first business, of course, is their retail and e-commerce business. That's how they started. That's what they are well known in. But that's not how they make money. They make very little from that, as I mentioned earlier on. The second main business they have is their media business. So this is where they've got Twitch, which is the uh, market leading live streaming business for games and sports. They've got Amazon Music that competes with uh, Apple Music and Spotify. And of course, they've got, they've got Prime Video that competes with uh, Netflix and Disney Plus. Of course, their retail e commerce business competes with Target and Walmart and, and Alibaba, right? Uh, the third business is their most profitable business, which is their cloud computing platform business known as Amazon Web Services. And I'm gonna talk about each business in detail in a while and show you why each business is extremely valuable, okay? Their fourth business is Amazon Logistics, where they are competing with UPS, FedEx, and the United States Postal Service. The fifth business is also extremely profitable, which is their advertising business. That's where they compete with Meta, uh, basically Facebook, Instagram. They compete with Google and YouTube. Okay, And you can see the breakdown of their revenue over here. Um, they make 62 billion revenue from their cloud business, 84 billion from their logistics business, 31 billion from their advertising business, 31.76 billion from their subscription services, which is uh, Amazon Prime, people pay like $130 a year for the Prime membership where they get the videos, they get free delivery, same day delivery. Uh, people pay subscription for their audio books, their digital music, all right? And for their retail e-commerce business, you can see it's about $222 billion for their online stores, $103 billion, which they earn from third-party sellers on their platform. They earn through commissions and... Um, payment services, so on and so forth, and 17 billion from physical stores. So, you're buying five businesses at once in Amazon. Let's look at each business. So the first, of course, is the uh, retail e-commerce business. That's under the Amazon.com brand, okay? So what people do is they pay a membership, Amazon Prime, which I pay for as well, $130 a year in the US. Singapore's like only like $3 a month, really cheap. They're gonna raise it later on, right? Again, with this Prime membership, what happens? You get same day free delivery and you get a lot of perks, okay? Uh, they also have got what is known as Buy With Prime, where Amazon, they allow merchants anywhere in the world to put the Buy With Prime uh, logo, whatever it is, and people click on that, Amazon will fulfill their orders, same day delivery, free delivery, and for Prime members, it's free. So it makes merchants all around the world wanna use uh, Amazon to fulfill the orders because they get access to all these 
millions of prime customers at one go. Amazon also has got physical retail like Whole Foods, the healthy supermarket chain, and Amazon Go, which is kind of like their supermarkets. So in retail e-commerce, like I said, it's not really profitable, at least not now, but they can make it really profitable in the future if they want to. Right now, the reason it's not profitable is because they're spending a lot of money to acquire new customers. And they don't mind doing that because in a short term, they lose money when they acquire customers, but they know that the customer has a very high lifetime value. That the moment people get addicted to using Amazon, free delivery, same day delivery, they'll keep ordering and ordering for the rest of their life. So the lifetime value is huge. So they don't mind spending more in the short term, acquire the customer, and then milk the customer for the rest of their life. So that's the reason why in the short term, it's not that profitable. Second reason is Amazon has been spending a lot of money on their insane fulfillment promise, which again is like same day. Imagine you buy something online, they deliver on the same day or a day later free. I mean, who the heck can compete with that? Okay, but to do that, it's not cheap. They, they spend a lot of money on fulfillment centers, on trucks. So all that spending basically reduce their profits in the short term. Okay, but in the long run, it essentially will kill all the competition because who the hell wants to buy something and get it delivered in more than one or two days after that. You just go to Amazon. So they're getting people addicted to their, their business model. Now, in terms of US e-commerce, Amazon of obviously dominates. Okay, they've got 49% market share of all US e-commerce sales. And of course, the rest are all far behind. eBay, 6%, Apple, 3.9%, Walmart, 3.7%, Home Depot, 1.5%. So they have got their online stores where they sell their own shit. I mean, sorry, they sell their own products. And they also have a platform where third-party resellers, right? I mean, you and me, we can go on Amazon and sell our stuff. And Amazon would charge us commissions. Uh, they offer payment services, um, which is Amazon Pay, and they will do the fulfillment, right? They will do the logistics and send the stuff to our customers. And of course, they've got physical stores as well. So that's the first business. Again, this first business currently is not that profitable, but it has the highest revenue and is their way of attracting people into their ecosystem. And eventually, uh, once they're done with a lot of their, their expenses to build their fulfillment centers, this is gonna be really profitable as well. Now, if you don't know, their buy of prime service is basically a Shopify killer. And that's why I've told people who are invested in Shopify, you know, be really careful because what Amazon is doing with buy of prime, they could literally destroy Shopify or many other businesses. Because again, with buy of prime, uh, you can buy same day delivery, free delivery, and people who buy things outside of Amazon, merchants can use the buy of prime service. So this could potentially be a Shopify killer. Okay, so that's the first business. The second business currently is the most profitable business of all. In fact, this year, if I'm not wrong, this business alone is contributing over 80% of Amazon's profit. This is Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services or AWS is their cloud computing platform business. What do they do? So basically, they provide a mixture of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and package software as a service offering for enterprises. Basically, any company that wants to do business online, that wants to provide their services and applications on the cloud, they have to use a cloud computing platform provider like Amazon, yeah? So Amazon offers organizations tools like computing power, database storage, and content delivery services. They are the market leader in cloud infrastructure. As you can see AWS, Amazon Web Services, has a 34% market share, followed by Microsoft's Azure at 21%, and Google Cloud 10%, Alibaba Cloud 5%. So AWS is the leader in this business. This business uh, grew at 37% year on year. Uh, revenue for 2021, 62.2 .2 billion. Now, how big is this business? To give you an idea, okay, AWS 
is one of the world's largest software services company. It is two times bigger than Oracle, 2.8 times bigger than SAP, and more than 2.5 times bigger than Salesforce. That's how big this business is. Their revenue for this year is estimated to be $82 billion. So this is, again, one of their highest growth businesses and most profitable businesses. Who are their customers? All these are their customers. By the way, Disney, Disney Plus runs on Amazon Web Services. Netflix runs on Amazon Web Services. So all these famous companies that you know, whether it's Instagram or Shell or Adobe or NASDAQ or SAP, they all run on Amazon Web Services platform. Now, this business has a very high switching cost. What does it mean? Once an organization builds their business on AWS, it's very difficult for them to change to another cloud provider. In fact, Netflix has said in their financial reports that one of their key risks is that Netflix's entire business is built on AWS. So if Amazon becomes a bastard one day and they decide to raise their, their fees, Netflix has no choice but to pay the fees. So basically, Amazon has all these businesses by the balls. They can't leave, right? In fact, Netflix has once said that if they had to leave Amazon Web Services, it would take them two years to migrate everything to another provider. Two years. Do you think Netflix can, can afford to be down for two years? No, they can't even afford to be down for a day. So that's why this is a fantastic business because again, companies that are on this, they can't leave. They'll be there you know, for the rest of their foreseeable life and Amazon makes so much money from this business. Okay. Their third business is the up and coming business. Now this one of course is not profitable yet. They're spending billions on content. A recent, they spent billions making rings of power. Some people love it, some people hate it, whatever, right? Now this is their media business. So in their media business, there are three main brands, right? They've got their Prime Video, which competes with Disney+, Plus, competes with HBO, competes with Netflix. They've got Twitch, which is their live streaming platform. Uh, for games and, and sports. And of course, Amazon Music that competes with Spotify and, and Apple Music, right? Now, how's their, their media business doing? Well, it's number two right now. So Netflix has 45% market share of the video streaming market, but Netflix is kind of a losing market share, okay? Second place is Amazon's Prime Video at 11.9% market share. And they are growing their market share, taking market share away from Netflix. In third place, also growing and taking market share is, of course, Disney Plus at 8%, and you've got all the rest. You've got Apple TV, Hulu, oh, Hulu's owned by Disney as well, HBO Max owned by, uh, owned by Discovery, Warner Brothers, Paramount at 3.3%. So this is a, uh, an upcoming business that's, that's building market share. Is the video streaming stream market profitable? Uh, you bet. As you can see that huge growth potential uh, for the North American video streaming market projected uh, to reach, uh, right now it's like what? Projected to reach about 200 billion you know, by the end of this year. So that's their media business. Twitch, which Amazon owns, has a 73% market share in terms of daily active users in the live streaming market. So they are number one in live streaming and Prime Videos, which is video streaming, they are number two, catching up with Netflix. Their fourth business is Amazon advertising business. And this is extremely profitable with huge high growth rates, growth rates as well, all right? So their ad revenue, in 2021 was $31.16 billion. That's a 45% growth over 2020. Sorry, typo over here, should be growth over 2020. Now, their revenue estimation for this year is over $40 billion. Now, is that big? Yes. So a lot of people don't know this, but Amazon's advertising business is bigger than YouTube's entire advertising business. They just overtook YouTube last year. 
So if you go to Amazon and you, again, go on your web page, you see ads appearing. Yep, Amazon charges advertisers for those ads and they may soon put advertisements on their video streaming and music streaming platforms as well. So there's huge growth for their advertising business. Basically, Amazon's ad business alone is nearly four times the size of Twitter and Snap combined. And they have just overtaken YouTube. YouTube's ad business in 2021 was 28 billion and Amazon is 31 billion. So uh, again, if you're buying Amazon, you're buying a huge advertising business as well. Their fifth business is their Amazon logistics business. Now, Amazon logistics business, they compete with UPS, FedEx, and the US Postal Service. Now, I've said long ago that I wouldn't want to own FedEx or UPS because they're getting killed by Amazon, okay? You can see that over the last 10 years, UPS has been losing market share every year. FedEx has been lo losing market share every year. The US Postal Service has been losing market share since 2018. And who's taking all the market share? Who's delivering all the packages? It's Amazon Logistics, oh my God. So Amazon Logistics has just overtaken FedEx at 22% market share and soon to overtake UPS at 24% market share. It is inevitable. So this was the article, right? Amazon poised to pass UPS and FedEx to become largest US delivery service by early 2022 or 2023. So again, it's a massive business. So again, when you buy Amazon, what are you buying? You're buying not an e-commerce business only, you're buying a cloud computing business bigger than Salesforce, bigger than Oracle. You're buying an ad business that's bigger than YouTube, bigger than Twitter, bigger than Snap. You're buying a media business that's competing with Netflix, taking market share from Netflix and Disney+. Plus. And you're buying a logistics business that is overtaking UPS and FedEx. You're basically buying five businesses that are dominating the entire world. So if Amazon is such a great business, why isn't everyone buying it? Why is it more popular? Why isn't the stock price going up every day? Why is the price going down in the last one and a half or two years? Why is it going nowhere right now? It's because on the surface, this company doesn't look very exciting. On the surface. So let me explain why. So usually investors, they like to buy companies where the revenue is growing consistently. Now we have that in Amazon, revenue growing consistently, check. Second, people like to invest in companies that are very profitable. Profits are growing consistently, high profit margins. Now, although Amazon's profits have been growing consistently, but their profit margins have been very, very low. They are showing very low uh, profit margins. And in the last few quarters, this is the quarterly data, this is the annual data, the last two quarters, they have been showing losses. So that, that puts people off. People are freaked out. Why are you losing money? <laughs> okay, your revenue is going to be losing money. Something's wrong with you. So that, that's what puts people off. So recently, they have been showing negative income or negative profits in the last two quarters and negative free cash flow. So again, investors like to invest in companies where the free cash flow is increasing, company generating more and more cash. And you can see that again, over the years, their free cash flow has been going up, but the last year it has turned negative. So this has again, freaked people out, put people off. On top of that, Amazon doesn't pay dividends. Now, when companies don't pay dividends, they should at least buy back shares to return capital to shareholders. They have not been buying back shares, but they've just changed that. So this year, for the first time, they announced that they're going to buy back $10 billion worth of shares. So this is one reason why a lot of people, they don't get excited by Amazon because, again, on the surface, it's like it's not really profitable and free cash will turn negative. You know, something's wrong with it, right? Plus, if you take a look at P.E. ratio, a lot of amateur investors, they look at P.E. ratio as a way to value the business. So the higher the P.E., they think the more expensive. Now, if you look at Amazon, the P.E. is 102 times P.E. My God, that's insane. Are you crazy? It's too expensive. You know, Google P.E. is like 18 times, Microsoft 24, Netflix 29, Apple 23. I'm paying 102 times. No freaking way, right? So again, uh, doesn't look 
uh, cheap on the surface, doesn't look like a good business on the surface. But if you actually dig deeper into the business and you really understand the business, you realize that the company has actually been artificially suppressing their profits and deliberately making their profits very low, causing the PE to look very high. Now, why are they doing this? Why are they making the profits very low deliberately? Well, it's because it's all part of their evil plan. So subscribe to the channel and wait for my part two of this video where I'll explain about what's their evil plan and I'll value the company and we'll find out whether it's expensive or cheap to invest in. See you guys in part two. If you want to catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now. Click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you want to check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're going to learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you want to join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.